Hello, uh, happy to hear you today. Um, thank you for coming to our talk. Uh, my name is David. Uh, Co-presenting with me will be Eriko. Uh, about me, uh, I love open source and free and open source software. Um, I worked uh, through my life since I was like 15 and started playing with Ubuntu with like everything from GNOME to Linux kernel libraries and stuff. And um, I like it a lot. So, and I will having this talk mostly because I love to optimize for performance and recent years also for simplicity because uh, having uh, fast code and fast stuff isn't always the best thing if, you, uh, if no one understands it. Let's go for another slide. So, introduction of this talk. Uh, first, I will, I will talk about introduction, what we're using, what um, software we're using, what hardware we're using. Uh, then I will go very quickly through level one and level two. That's like basic uh, usage of CI, you know, the stuff you, if you used ever CI, you usually do. And then in level three, I get to some interesting things uh, like device under test and how we're testing to real devices. And Erico will continue with level four, which is running the farm in, you know, the real hardware and uh, taking care of it. Let's go then. So what is Mesa 3D CI? Uh, Mesa 3D is uh, itself graphic drivers for Linux. You have one part of the driver inside Linux kernel and the, everything which takes care about rendering and OpenGL and Vulkan, that's in Mesa. So. That's Mesa 3D, and Mesa 3D CI is solution built on GitLab CI because we use GitLab. We have own instance, free desktop GitLab, and uh, it's a solution built on that to test uh, on the real hardware. So, before we start, uh, my talk will be mostly focused on uh, the pre-merge testing. We do also other testing, but what is important, when the developer submits the code to the project, we need to quickly test the code and ensure he doesn't break anything. On the other hand, we don't want to block other developers or the merge request for too long, so we have to like take it in a reasonable time frame. So uh, our goal is about 20 minutes to do testing. And of course, uh, make developers happy because said developers and broken testing, that's never going well. So level one, uh, we do basic things. We build containers for a few distributions. We're using Debian, Fedora, and Alpine, and Alpine right now. And uh, for testing later, we're using only the Debian images. And, but we, use, uh, we build also these distributions because, for example, Alpine has muscle ellipse, so it has different environment. So we want to build it on it. And uh, Fedora, you know, because why not? And uh, for this, we're using CI templates, which help us prepare to images and stuff, and it's provided by free desktop GitLab infrastructure. So it's of this thing, we're using GCC, Clang. Uh, we, we have like around 20 built tests just for building different combination with different options like the LTO and we use uh, address sanitizers, memory sanitizers, like to test like everything we can offline without hardware. And for linting, we use like Rust, uh, Rust linting, C-Lang format. And for our CI scripts, we're using shellcheck because um, we will get to it why. So uh, level two, testing without hardware. Uh, after we compile to Mesa, uh, we do simple compilations. On some, on some jobs, we're testing unit tests. So basic functionality of the library. And we're testing shaders with sh shader DB, where we uh, kind of fake, fake the GPUs. We say like we have GPUs and we test shaders on the backends so we know the uh, generated sh graphic shaders are okay. Then uh, we use uh, runtime testing and we can do that without hardware because we have a uh, few drivers which runs on CPU, just emulated. So uh, we can test Vulkan and OpenGL on CPU.
Thank you. So uh, this is our small pipeline. Some people has 8K monitors, so they fit the whole pipeline on a screen. Uh, you probably won't be able to read itself jobs. Don't, don't worry. We don't, if, if it gets at night and we are like tired, we, we can either. So uh, this is like around how much? 200, 250 jobs. There is n every job isn't currently on this slide. So, you know, I had to try to um, fit it. And so this is kind of level three. Most of these jobs are from the devices. So, uh, what we use? Uh, we have uh, multiple solutions for testing. Because many companies uh, contribute to this solution, so we have many approaches integrated into GitLab CI. Uh, we have Lava Farms, that's first thing. Uh, Lava Farm is automated validation architecture. Originally, it was built for ARM devices by Linaro to get their testing, you know, um, to get our testing. And these days we're using it for IMD64, we're using it like for everything. And these farms has uh, advantages in like things you have like monitoring on top of them, you can set priori uh, pri priorities for the jobs. So you have like a lot of abilities how to handle stuff, which we sometimes use in RCI. For example, we use a lot of priorities because since we allow developers to run manually to jobs and test if they need, uh, we need to merge, which is the merge pipeline, which going like pre-merge before the code gets in. Uh, so we need like get into 20 minutes and if someone starts excessively testing uh, their jobs on the CI, you know, uh, we block the other people which want to merge. So the prior prioritization in these farms is very useful for us. And then for example, we have uh, Valve farms. They using a little bit different approach. They using container containers. So they boot into minimal interface and they just load the container with tests. And these tests are same as we are using on other devices, but differently packed, you know, into container. And we will talk about containers versus rootfs, which we uh, use on other devices very soon. Then we have barebone devices, uh, which have no prioritization and this stuff. There is like multiple farms, so a lot of people, some people running these devices at home without farm and just for their testing. Some people, uh, some companies running these are also like barebones, like Google, for example, because they didn't want to use the lava. And uh, these farms, uh, every farm has like a little bit different of handling. So on every device, you have to count with a little bit different environment. So when you're writing tests or you want to like uh, have reliable results, you always have to test against everything. What is good that like one test can be run everywhere. So like the tests are shared. So if we write a test and test them, like they are everywhere same. And uh, sometimes some devices have different kernels. For example, Raspberry Pis has uh, custom kernels from vendor because you know of the reliability and everything. So, but on the other hand, if you want to enable some kernel feature, which is very useful for our testing, you cannot do it because you know these kernels are shipped and you cannot update them. So uh, for for this part of hardware, we also using smart logic. So for example, if you push code into our repository and it only touches, for example, Intel code and not the shared parts, only Intel code gets tested. So you don't need to excessively waste cycles and you know you, you see the pipeline and waste so much energy and power and time to test everything. Uh, also, we have kill switches for farm. Uh, we currently have like seven kill switches. So when farm gets uh, starts failing, like because of network, because of out of space or something, something breaks randomly, you know, then we can shut down the farm and com continue working and testing, not having to disable whole CI. So environment. Uh, every when you want to run the job on every device, it will probably run a little bit differently. So you need to test on almost every device when you're developing for it. Uh, you have to take extra care about some variables and stuff because you know 
the variable might be not set in your test on that device. So uh, there is some extra complexity to that, do, do it, and containers or rootfs. We have two approaches. One is uh, the container. So you test, uh, you just load the container on the device. Valve, for example, use it, and uh, the non-hardware jobs using it. And it's great uh, because of the developer can just download the image and run it locally on his computer without setting up stuff. On the other hand, it's a little bit slower. For example, for lava farms and some bare bone devices, we're using rootfs, which is uh, which advantages is uh, performance, because you know you, you just unpack some rootfs on NFS, NFS server or send it to device, and that's all, uh, no overhead. Uh, probably over time we get to containers because uh, for developers it's more useful. Every test is different, right? Uh, so uh, we, because we need to cover a lot of topics, every testing suite has different inputs and outputs, so you need to handle that somehow. Uh, some tests handling flags, some tests handling failures differently, reports are different. For some things, we try to like, we try to like wrap it into something and provide same way of output. For some tests, we just uh, adapt the test a bit, so we send some patches to upstream or like keep patches aside. But we always try to keep small amount of patches as we can because we have to maintain it and it's like huge pain. Let's switch to the other slide. How much time? Nice. Let's switch to have another slide. Nice. So, uh, like most of interesting in our terms is stability. Because when you test graphic hardware, stability isn't a strong part. Um, first, let's talk about parallelism. We're using a huge set of tests, which takes, for example, like eight hours or 10 hours. If you want to test them before the code gets merged in 20 minutes, it's kinda, it can be kind of an issue. So first thing we do is we use parallel jobs. So of course, we just shard the test over like eight or 10 device. So we also shard the time which is needed to run it. This is first part. And second part is uh, that parallelism inside jobs. We, because the tests, the GPU tests usually don't utilize the system for 100%. So we use parallel runs even inside the runners. So for example, we run in eight threads the tests. And there is some cost of it, and that's like flags. Because the tests are usually not meant to be run in that huge parallelism. So sometimes something fails. And it's very hard to debug what failed and why. Like, we know what failed, but it may be just, you know, one job run with another job once a thousand runs. So that's a hard thing to handle. And we handled that, and we will get to that with flags point. So flags, yes, yes, no, yes. Uh, you fix something, it works, but you know, once in 100, in 10, in thousand runs, it doesn't. So. We figured out we cannot like get into state when everything will work every time because this is like a lot of thousands of tests we run. So we have multiple layers of handling this stuff. First, GitLab is a wonderful piece of software, but sometimes, you know, sometimes you say like red three job when it fails. This is one level of handling our flags. Because when we want to merge stuff and something just fails once for some no explainable reason, we don't want to block developer. So we want to retry at least once. So we retry once, but just recently GitLab has had a bug, which means like when you retry once, it just stuck the job in a queue, and until you send another job, it gets stuck. But we are constrained by time limits when we're merging, so uh, that's failed pipeline and developer is unhappy. So what we do, uh, we sent uh, dummy jobs to it uh, just to get it working, and recently GitLab fixed the issue. So this is first level. Then you have infra level, 
Because we have farm in different locations, they are connected over internet, and internet sometimes fails, some even data center fails, some switch somewhere fails. So uh, sometimes uh, you have issues with transferring rootfs, transferring test jobs. Happens sometimes. Sometimes storage fails, sometimes itself uh, GitLab runner fails. It happens, so you have to retry. That's still handled by retrying the job. Then you have like the device itself where you like getting data, data over the serial port. So originally when you boot the device, you're getting data over serial port and these devices which converts serial output from the devices to USB and to some, um, some machine which takes care of it, uh, they sometimes fail or, or misbehave, which is very unpleasant and it happens only time to time. So, for example, recently my colleague implemented like SSH, so we, we just use a serial port for beginning and when we can, we switch to SSH to have like, to be sure that we get all the inputs and the outputs of the, of the machine correctly and we can parse it and um, understand it. And of course, then you have like GPU level flags, as I said, you run a lot of stuff in parallel, sometimes driver in some uh, rare occasion have not handled the corner case. And then, you know, one test fail from 10,000s and you have to rerun. So we are able to mark these tests, usually inside the testing suites, we just mark them as a flag. And if there is flag, it gets reported, but it's not going to fail, which is nice. What is very useful is that part where we like monitor everything. So we have like every day we have reports what test was flaking, how often it was flaking and depending on this we can update the expectations, we can report to developers, we can like you know handle it somehow. And when this got in a place it was the most useful thing like for the increasing reliability I think. So, conclusion of my part is, uh, if you have like CI as R for like uh, developing uh, GPU drivers, you need at least one CI developer. Community can help you a lot because like a lot of people which are not developers or CI developers just came to us and like sent patch like, okay, you can uprev this uh, dependency, fix something, you can improve the script and it's amazing, but you still have uh, to have some people which working on it full time. Um, there is another thing because for example on our CI uh, collaborating a few companies so if you merging some bigger change across all the devices all the farms it takes much longer and you have to be aware that with longer time you wait to get merged uh, there is chance someone else push some merge request and break your changes so it's like the CI is still changing very fast even if it's really huge and already very covering uh, almost everything. And what is most important that the reasonable, reasonable reliability of the CI can be reached. We're still getting some fails, some issues, but on the scale what we're testing, it's still perfect. So like the developers are feeling plus minus happy, they are getting their code inside. So everything is perfect. Anyway, Thank you for your attention, and I will pass to Eriko. So, uh, hi everyone, I'm Eriko. Uh, I work for Red Hat. I'm gonna talk about my project, which, which is to run uh, my own uh, farm, uh, actually run it at, at my home. Uh, this work is exact, uh, not necessarily uh, related to my work. It's, it's something that I classify more as a community work. Uh, so, a few years ago, maybe like, uh, four years, uh, four or five years ago, or something, uh, I started participating in this uh, Limo project, uh, which maybe I'm not sure if uh, anyone heard about it, but it's, it's a community driver for the uh, first generation of ARM GPUs. Uh, it's a GPU that's uh, a little bit old at this point, but it's still used by a number of uh, embedded devices. For example, maybe you went. Uh, across the hall and you came, uh, came uh, across this device. It's a pretty popular device these days. Uh, it's called the PinePhone. Uh, it happens to be running uh, with this GPU driver that we developed uh, with the community. 
there was uh, fairly active uh, development in this, uh, both in the Mesa space as well as in the kernel space uh, for the past years. I mean, we got uh, super took SCART to run, so I guess that's uh, basically job done. Uh, so now we are in a situation where the driver is more or less uh, stable. Uh, we have a very good uh, coverage in the uh, OpenGL ES uh, compliance test for this device. And so development more or less slow down a little bit. We get uh, games to run, so I guess uh, we could say job done. But there's still one thing we can actually do uh, as a contribution uh, for this, which is to uh, care about the regressions, because people are actually using this. If the developers are no longer uh, pulling it every day and, and running the tests every day, something that would be really, really great to have is to have coverage in CI, so whenever people are pushing uh, code uh, to the shared infrastructure of Mesa, uh, or actually new code uh, to implement new features or fix a bug in the driver, uh, we, we have uh, coverage for it. But who is going to maintain it? Like, there's no company backing this up. Um, nobody's getting any payment to do, to do this work. So in one of the conferences I attended, uh, we were actually giving some of those boards uh, to the uh, speakers. And there were a few left, and I got offered to bring them home and maybe set up some CI farm somewhere. Uh, they're actually this device. Um, I have a stack of those uh, in my home, and they, they are the, the farm that runs the jobs. Can you put it in the stand? Uh, nowadays, uh, we are the state where this is uh, getting tested as part of the big uh, matrix pipeline that uh, David was talking about. Uh, if you can see here, there's the Lima Mali 450 jobs. They are running on, on these boards at my home. Uh, we can see here also some of the parallelism things that David was talking. Uh, for example, this test, the piglet test, they are actually, they take a long time. And we have this rule that we should try and keep something like under 10 minutes. So we split and they actually will turn on two boards and run half of the tests in each of the boards so that we can reduce the runtime. And so what did I have to set up to get this uh, working? I decided to use uh, a lava farm because I didn't want to implement yet another set of power on and connect to the serial port and like read from the serial port and type in some commands and the, the, this kind of thing, for example, there's also, uh, these boards don't have a lot of storage, so they use NFS root, and they need to download the kernel from TFTP, and all these kind of things I get basically for free by setting, it, set, setting up uh, Lava. And also because uh, Mesa is a GitLab project, I'm running uh, GitLab runner as a separate uh, runner as well. To set up the hardware side, I needed the actual boards, which I happen to have because uh, I got them from the from the community, I guess. I need to run a Lava host somewhere and a GitLab runner somewhere. I do have a, a separate server, which is running this as a couple of virtual machines, uh, which are next to those boards. You need to have some solution to power the boards on and off. They are not actually on all the time. Every time there's a new job for Mesa, they need to be powered on, and they need to pull the kernel and everything. So my current solution for the power, instead of going for some super expensive uh, power control device, I have uh, some of those um, Wi-Fi control device. I just send like a HTTP request to it and it turns on or turns off. And that's like a, a one-line script I can run and then I can just put this script into Lava and Lava will uh, take care of, of that part. Also need serial connection uh, for this. I'm using those uh, USB cables as well. I have a picture in the next. And then there's the whole network infrastructure, which, no, not yet, uh, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. This is my view, which I have uh, accessing Lava directly. It's, uh, it's not something that is uh, visible outside because I don't even have to expose Lava to the internet. Uh, but the, those are what I can see the jobs that are being run by different merge requests that people are submitting or sometimes people testing their own branches. In the last month, it ran 1,682 jobs, uh, not counting the boards that Lava is running just to check that the board has not disconnected or anything. 
So some of the challenges I had to do this, uh, setting up the initial secure network, basically I'm putting these boards on the internet and by definition they are downloading code from the internet and running inside my home. And that's something that, uh, well, is not very, like it, it could be a little bit insecure, I guess, to run code from the internet. Uh, so I set up the whole isolation for this network. So basically these devices, they are blocked uh, by firewall and by, uh, switch level as well so that they cannot see any of the other computers that are connected to the same network. Oh. Uh, some of the other challenges were related to infrastructure reliability. So all those things that I have listed there, they have failed at, uh, at some point. And nowadays, since it's run as part of the actual CI, if my network is down and someone's, someone wants to merge something that is in the common part of Mesa, it will not be merged because the tests are going to fail. So it, it took some time to get to a reliable state. I actually set up the boards way before the, I actually put them online as part of the pipeline. Each one of those things, I don't have time to go over all of them now, but they, they eventually had some flakes and I had to uh, replace something or, or change something. People ping me on IRC like, hey, our lab is not responding. Uh, if I don't fix it in, in like 10 minutes, they're just going to disable the farm, which is completely fine. Uh, results that I got from this, actually, I got a lot of uh, new developer engagement. So like some, sometimes someone is enabling some new feature in the common part of Mesa, and they actually don't really care much about the driver we're developing, but they're like, hey, you know what, actually I'm developing this feature and I just add this one line to your driver and I actually enable this feature for you as well. And CI is happy about it, so we actually get a lot of new patches by doing the work of having the tests actually in the upstream. So that's uh, something super cool that, that we have now. We started with just super simple uh, OpenGL ES2 tests, but we actually improved more to the EGL tests, to the Piglet tests as well. And then, well, first we start just with the OpenGL ES ones. So many regressions uh, were prevented. I figured out a couple of kernel bugs that nobody noticed before, but because uh, CI was uh, running the tests uh, every day, uh, actually some of the kernel bugs uh, we, we found out because we tried to bump the Mesa CI version and that failed. And the nice thing is that it's very easy for anyone to disable the labs. I actually checked. The lab has been on for two years. People disabled it six times uh, over the last uh, two years, but it's, like it can happen that my network is down or something and someone can quickly flip a switch and I'm not blocking anyone and I think that's uh, a good thing. Hopefully I can inspire someone that if you participate in some project that uh, has some super specific hardware that you need, um, it is actually possible to be that even in a project as big as Mesa with so many contributors from many uh, big companies. I, I was actually talking to someone this week and I said that Lava was actually something uh, relatively pleasant to work with and I basically followed what's in the Lava documentation. I set up my own Lava Lab and that has not been a hassle since then. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of happy to, to work with Lava and it takes care of all the boring things I didn't want to care about. Uh, Mesa has some uh, documentation as well coming from the other Lava, other, uh, Lava Lab, which I think is basically Collabor at this point. I did have to learn some new stuff, especially about the network side of things. For example, to provide some isolation that I was happy enough with to put this on the internet. But like I mentioned a few times already, the fact that we have a good way to disable me in case I'm causing some trouble uh, is perfectly fair and I think is a must thing to have if you actually uh, go, go forward to do something like this. And network isolation is really a must. Uh, you don't want uh, people, like we had incidents, uh, and I can talk to you maybe if someone is interested about it, but fortunately uh, nobody, like these boards are not even able to, to see what's in the rest of my network. And then I'm gonna pass the word back to David. Thanks. So uh, I had to put slide what's coming next. Uh, there is a lot of things coming next, but what we're working right now is like, for example, for Mesa, 
we uh, when we want to add a new test or update some dependencies, we have to rebuild like one hour long pipeline on at least three architectures, which is which started like you know the developers was saying like okay I need this this dependency a little bit newer what we what we what is inside the Debian. And like you, let's compile this and let's compile that. And you know, after some time, you have like one hour pipeline when you compiling CC cache software, and like it takes a long time. So we right now trying to split it. So like, if developers need to change some dependencies or test, not different Mesa, but different, for example, libraries we use, so they can have it like in few minutes, not like in one hour. And we are also trying to increase uh, testing coverage. So, for example, we have tracing. We have traces, which are like, imagine it like replay of games or applications, which we just take like one or two frames from the game and we just feed it to GPU. So we, we don't replay the game itself. We don't have to run it. We just run the frames which goes into GPU. So, sorry. Uh, Q and A. Okay, so and of course adding more devices because more devices is always better. Let's switch to Q and A. <laughs> and that was quick. Yeah, I'm trying. All oh, right, <laughs> wrong button. Too much. A little bit back. Yeah, questions. So questions. Do you have any questions for us? Here is one question. I, I, I will answer. Uh, so, um, all right, repeat the question. So, wh what's going to happen when uh, the GPU starts crashing to kernel? So, first, uh, we usually enable testing on our CI when like the kernel drivers are, are already in place and at least a bit stable, but for, so, for some let's say some other devices which never had like great coverage of kernel support and like we still test them at some point, it sometimes happen. Uh, there are two types of crashes. One crash is just, you know, the driver crash, but the kernel continue working. That's completely fine and we can like even continue if uh, it can support restart of GPU. At the point where when the device crashes, it's not a problem because we have like set up timeout and when the console, when the SSH or a, a serial connection doesn't, for example, print anything in five minutes or like some time, then we just shut down the device and rerun the test. And if it's crashing continuously, the developer has to fix his, you know, bugs. Is that, is that answer for your question? Yeah, like the, the kernel crashes on, on GPU loads is not uh, really a problem because uh, every time we are downloading the kernel and restarting the board, so it's not like some tests can run and then like the next test which runs can be affected by it. Uh, also, Mesa maintains the, the own, the, its own kernel, which is uh, run on the boards, and every time we're going to update this kernel, we will rerun the whole pipeline multiple times to make sure that this kernel that we are putting and be going to be downloaded for Mesa CI, uh, it's stable on all, on all of the boards. And also part of the CI work is maintain this kernel as well to make sure that it's not going to cause any, any problems. Other questions? So the question was how we define the priorities for the march and for the get the right jobs in right time. So um, for example, for Lava, we currently using approach that like the GitLab runner which serves Lava has some like cache. He can like you know load like uh, let's say like if we have like eight devices, we have something like 24 jobs open, and. So everything which gets pushed, gets pushed into these 24 jobs cache, and each job has own priority. For uh, March, we have like the highest priority. For user tests, we have like lower priority. And for uh, the nightly runs or like the runs inside the main branch when like it gets already merged, we have like lowest priority. And 
So the trick is uh, when this job gets like ordered into GitLab Runner, the GitLab Runner, you know, picks up the, you know, with the highest priority around them and others have to wait longer. Uh, for for our lava farm, yes, yes. So thank you for your time, and thank you for coming. <laughs>